begin our look at sports with some Thursday night football this Friday morning. Forget about Tom Brady and the Patriots offense. Undefeated New England is getting it done these days with its defense. The reigning Super Bowl champions forced four turnovers and beat the New York football Giants 35-14 to reach 6-0 last night in Foxborough. Check this out too. Brady had two touchdown runs and moved ahead of Peyton Manning for second place on the NFL's all-time passing yards list despite not really being at his best. The G-Men played pretty well defensively and they have a slew of injuries of course and Daniel Jones had three interceptions. That's a recipe for a loss especially against undefeated New England. Sam Darnold knew he had to make sure one thing was clear before he returned to action. The Jets quarterback said last week he wanted to have assurance that he didn't risk dying on the field because of an enlarged spleen. Recovering from mono he got that clearance this week. Darnold and the Jets are home for Dallas this Sunday at 425 p.m. The Giants return to MetLife next Sunday to welcome Arizona. Meanwhile, the Cleveland Browns were supposed to be the toast of the NFL this season. That hasn't been the case so far. In fact, there's trouble in paradise. Odell Beckham Jr. and Baker Mayfield expressed frustration at their inability to connect for more completions as the Browns have sputtered to a 2-3 and three start. Beckham has been limited to four catches for 47 yards over the past two games. That's the lowest mark over any two-game span in Beckham's NFL career according to ESPN stats. I guess he finally misses Eli Manning, Rena. In the NBA, Kevin Durant doesn't think he's missing out on anything when it comes to the New York Knicks. Durant said Tuesday that the Orange and Blue can't really rely on their brand, quote-unquote, to land the best players, many of whom don't even remember the franchise actually being good. He said, I think a lot of fans look at the Knicks as a brand and expect these younger players in their lifetime. They don't remember the Knicks being good, Durant said Tuesday in an in-studio interview with Hot 97 in New York. I've seen the Knicks in the finals, but kids coming up after me didn't see that. So the whole brand of the Knicks is not as cool as, let's say, the Golden State Warriors or even the Lakers or now the Nets. You know what I'm saying? The cool thing now is not the Knicks. Wow. Well, it's cool this morning to be a Washington Mystics fan because they are the WNBA champs. Everyone loves a winner, right? The Mystics beat the Connecticut Sun 89-78 on Thursday night in the winner-take-all game five of the finals at Entertainment and Sports Arena in D.C. Congrats to them. What a series. I think it's safe to say that Houston, New York in the American League Championship Series has a chance to go down in history. Garrett Cole and the Astros defeated Tampa in Game 5 Thursday night, 6-1. Cole fired 10 strikeouts in the elimination game to set up the showdown with the Bronx Bombers, which dispatched Minnesota in a sweep in the American League Division Series. Side note, Cole is 18-0 with a sub-2 ERA in his past 24 starts. He hasn't lost a game since May. His next start against the pinstripers would be a good time for that first loss wouldn't you say yes i would say it would be good yanks could be getting reinforcements back to injured center fielder aaron hicks feels like he's ready to return to the roster for the american league championship series against the strohs which opens saturday night tomorrow night hicks who has a right elbow flexor strain and last played on august 3rd is among a group of players at the yankees complex in tampa who were not on the alds roster hicks said tuesday he's definitely ready to go out there and play i think the yanks add him as a fourth outfielder in this upcoming series I could see CC Sabathia also pictured back on the roster as well. The MLB postseason has been remarkable so far. So good. With one swing, Howie Kendrick erased so much pain and disappointment associated with the words Game 5 in D.C. when he launched a go-ahead grand salami in the 10th inning on Wednesday night. It sent the Nationals dugout into a frenzy, stunned a sold-out crowd at Dodger Stadium, made up for Kendrick's own forgettable series, and finally gave the Nationals something to celebrate after so many years waiting for this moment. The Nationals are going to the National League League championship series for the first time since the franchise moved to Washington from Montreal prior to the 2005 season. They did it by knocking off the top seeded 106 win Dodgers, a team that by some measures was one of the best of all time in the NLDS, securing the decisive game with a 7-3 win in 10 innings on Wednesday night. The Nats became just the fourth team in MLB history to win a winner take all game in extra innings on the road after coming up short in this round four times losing in three game fives 2012 2016 and 2017 they finally left another team to answer questions about a disappointing exit in may 
They were 19 and 31 folks. They trailed in this series two games to one after losing game three on Wednesday night. They were down in the eighth inning 3-1 once again, but this time with Clayton Kershaw, arguably the best pitcher of his generation on the mound at Dodger Stadium. No team in MLB history had ever come back from down at least three runs when facing elimination twice in the same postseason. The Nats trailed by three in the wild card game and again on Wednesday, and they're still in contention to win it all. Unreal. The St. Louis Cardinals also survived a game five and rallied in their NLDS series against Atlanta to advance to the NLCS. Former Yankee Brian McCann got everything he wanted from his final major league season, minus the thrill of helping the Braves return to the World Series for the first time since he was a suburban Atlanta teenager who dreamed of playing for his hometown team after the Braves season unceremoniously ended with a 13-1 loss to the Cardinals in Game 5 of the NLDS on Wednesday night. McCann announced he had just played the last game of a 15-season career that included seven all-star selections. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Welterweight boxing champion Errol Spence crashed a speeding Ferrari in Dallas early Thursday and was badly injured, but is expected to survive, police said. The crash happened just before 3 a.m. when Spence's Ferrari crossed a median into oncoming traffic and flipped over several times, police said. Spence was taken to a hospital where he was placed in the intensive care unit. Police said they're still investigating the cause of the crash, but they noted that the Ferrari was speeding at the time. At times, it felt like only a force of nature could stop New, e New Zealand's streak of wins at the Rugby World Cup, and that's exactly what happened, folks. The threat of a typhoon forced Rugby World Cup organizers in Japan to cancel two pool games scheduled for Saturday, including the Pool B match between the defending champion All Blacks and Italy. That ended New Zealand's perfect record in the group stage. The three-time champions had won all 31 of their pool games dating to the first tournament back in 1987. Bad weather could affect the F1 race this weekend too. The 2019 Formula One season has reached Japan in the midst of the Rugby World Cup and typhoons of course in the same country. So all eyes will be on the Japanese Grand Prix where Lewis Hamilton's top spot is the story once again. Hamilton has won these, this Grand Prix race in both 2018 and 2017 as well as 2015 and 2014. Japan is the venue for the 17th Grand Prix of the 2019 season. If you want to watch it here in the States Arena live, it starts at 1.10 a.m. Eastern Time. 1.10 a.m. Mark it down. How about this uh, natural disaster courtesy of the NCAA? Monday, the association announced that its Division Three Committee on Infractions found that the head football coach at Mary Harden Baylor had violated his responsibility rules when he failed to promote an atmosphere for compliance and failed to monitor his staff, whatever that means. The summary released by the NCAA stated that its decision that the committee said that the football staff members led by the head coach violated recruiting and extra benefit rules by providing impermissible transportation. In summation, a total of two football players were given permission to use the head coach's 2006 Subaru on four different occasions. Because of that, the university confirmed that the NCAA has, among other punitive measures, stripped the football program of all of its wins and records during the 2016 and 2017 seasons, including its 2016 national championship. That's one slow car doing an awful amount of damage, Rena. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list for a MotoGP rider who's whipping around the track in anything but a Subaru on his way to becoming the greatest of all time. Honda's Mark Marquez sealed his fourth consecutive MotoGP title with four races to spare after winning the Thai Grand Prix on Sunday after a thrilling duel down the stretch. The title was the sixth MotoGP title of the Spaniards' Grand Prix career, with the 26-year-old becoming the youngest rider to achieve the feat. At the age of 26, he has won eight Grand Prix World titles after clinching his sixth MotoGP World Championship in Thailand. Think about that. Marquez has been a near unstoppable force across the last decade through all three classes of the World Championship. In MotoGP, he has romped to success on bikes that have proven difficult to handle in other riders' hands during MotoGP's most competitive era, with 2019 arguably his toughest challenge yet. Is he the greatest rider of all time? Well, maybe not yet. Yet, but if he continues to trend this way, by the time he's done, he will be. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Stay with us.